Hi friends, Miss Ward here. So we don't have school this Monday, we won't have our live sessions. And so I thought since Monday is also a holiday, which you may hear people refer to as Columbus Day, you may also hear people talking about Monday as Indigenous Peoples Day. And so I thought this would be a good time for me to make a recording to read you one of my favorite stories. It's called A Coyote Columbus Story. It's written by Thomas King and the illustrations are by William Kent Monkman. And as we read this story, and this is a fiction story, it's not a true story, but it has some really good ideas in it about thinking about what is fair? What does it mean to be fair as we listen to this story? Okay, so this is a Coyote Columbus story by Thomas King with illustrations by William Kent Monkman. It was Coyote who fixed up this world, you know? She is the one who did it. She made rainbows and flowers and clouds and rivers. And she made prune juice and afternoon naps and toenail polish and television commercials. Some of these things were pretty good, and some of these things were foolish. But what she loved to do best was play ball. There's a picture of Coyote relaxing by the riverside. Look at all these things that it, the book says that she made. Prune juice. Do you like prune juice? I don't know if I've ever had prune juice. Coyote played ball all day and all night. She would throw the ball and she would hit the ball and she would run and catch the ball. But playing ball by herself was boring. So she sang a song and she danced a dance and she thought hard and pretty soon along came some beavers. Let's play ball, says Coyote. We've got better things to do than play ball, says those beavers. We have to build a dam so we'll have a pretty pond to swim in. That's all very nice, says Coyote, but I wanna play ball. So Coyote sang her song and she danced her dance and she thought really hard and right away along came some moose. So here's a picture of Coyote asking the beavers if they wanna play ball. They say they have better things to do than to play ball, but she really wants to play. So she's looking for someone to play ball with. Here comes the moose. Let's play ball, says Coyote. What a foolish idea, says those moose. We'd rather wade in that lovely pond over there. And they do that. Playing ball is a lot more fun, says Coyote, but those moose don't hear her. I better sing my song and dance my dance and think real hard again, says Coyote, and she does. And in a while, along come some turtles. You're just in time to play ball, says Coyote. What a sweaty idea, says those turtles. We'd much rather lie on a nice warm rock in the middle of that beautiful pond. But who will play ball with me, cries Coyote. Tra la 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 la, sing those beavers and moose and turtles in that happy pond. Here's Coyote trying to get everyone to come and play ball with her, but they're all having too much fun in the pond. How do you think that makes Coyote feel? We know she's bored because it said so, but how else might you feel if you want to play and no one wants to play with you? Yeah, that must get kind of frustrating. I'll get it right this time, says Coyote. So she sings her song and she dances her dance and she thinks so hard that her nose falls off and right away along come some human beings. Do you want to play ball, says Coyote, and that one makes a happy mouth and wags her ears. Sure, says those human beings. That sounds like a good idea to us. Hooray, says Coyote, and she lets the human beings hit the ball first. Well, Coyote and those human beings become very good friends. You sure are a good friend, says those human beings. Yes, that's true, says Coyote. But you know, whenever Coyote and the human beings played ball, Coyote always won. She always won because she made up the rules. That sneaky one made up the rules and she always won because she could do that. Hmm. How does it make you feel when you play a game with someone who always, with somebody who always wins? I think it's nice sometimes to have a chance to win and sometimes it's nice to have a chance to lose. So you know what it feels like to do both. There's Coyote playing ball with the humans. But she always wins. Why? Because she makes up the rules. Hmm. That's not fair, said the human beings. Friends don't do that. That's a rule, says Coyote. Let's play some more. Maybe you will win next time. But they don't. You keep changing the rules, says those human beings. No, 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 says Coyote. You are mistaken. And then she changes the rules again. So after a while, those human beings find better things to do. Now let's talk about, we said we were going to think, think, think about things that are fair. Now if Coyote is playing ball with the humans, but she keeps changing the rules, is that fair? 
I would get really frustrated if I was playing a game with someone and they kept changing the rules so that they always won. It would almost feel like cheating to me. Don't you think? So the human beings found better things to do. Some of them go shopping. Some of them go skydiving. Some of them go see big time wrestling. Some of them go on a seven day Caribbean cruise. Those human beings got better things to do than play ball with Coyote and those changing rules. So Coyote doesn't have anyone to play with again. Uh, I think that's what happens sometimes. In order to be a good friend and to have friends, there's gotta be some give and take. You can't keep changing the rules on your friends or next time they won't wanna play with you. All right, here's some pictures of them doing all the different things besides playing ball with Coyote. So she has to play by herself. So she gets bored. When Coyote gets bored, anything can happen. Stick around, big trouble is going to come along, I can tell you that. Well, that silly one sings a song and she dances a dance and she thinks really hard, but she's thinking about changing those rules too and doesn't watch what she is making up out of her head. And when Coyote stops all that singing and dancing and thinking and she looks around, she sees three ships and some people in funny looking clothes carrying flags and boxes of junk. Oh, happy day, says Coyote. You are just in time for the ball game. Hello, says one of the men in silly clothes with red hair all over his head. I am Christopher Columbus. I am sailing the ocean blue and looking for India. Have you seen it? Forget India, says Coyote. Let's play ball. It must be around here somewhere, says Christopher Columbus. I have a map. Forget the map, says Coyote. I'll bet first and I'll tell you the rules as we go along. What do you think? Is she going to keep changing the rules? There's... Coyote, there's Christopher Columbus right there in his red hair, and there's his map. It says the new route to India, but his map is upside down. Do you think he's gonna find it? I don't know, let's see. Christopher Columbus and his friends don't wanna play ball. We've got work to do, they said. We've gotta find India. We've gotta find things we can sell. Yes, says those Columbus people, where is that gold? Yes, they says, where is that chocolate cake? Yes, they says, where are those computer games? Yes, they says, where are those music videos? Boy, says Coyote, that one scratches her head. I must have sung that song wrong. Maybe I didn't do the right dance. Maybe I thought too hard. These people I made have no manners. They act as if they've got no relations. Why do you think she says that? Is it because they don't want to play ball with her? Or they're just looking for stuff to sell? And she is right. Christopher Columbus and his friends start shouting and jumping up and down in their funny clothes. Boy, what a bunch of noise, says Coyote. What bad manners. You guys got to stop jumping and shouting or my nose will fall off. We got to find India, says Christopher Columbus. We got to become rich. We've got to become famous. Do you think you can help us? But all Coyote can think about is playing ball. I'll let you bet first, says Coyote. No time for games, says Christopher Columbus. I'll let you make the rules, says Coyote. But those Columbus people don't listen. They are too busy running around and looking for India, looking for stuff they can sell. And pretty soon they find that pond. Remember that pond? That's where all the beavers and moose and turtles were. I see a $4 beaver, says one. I see a $15 moose, says another. I see a $2 turtle, says a third. Those things aren't worth poop, says Christopher Columbus. We can't sell those things in Spain. Look harder. They're looking for things that they can sell. Moose and beavers and turtles. Christopher Columbus says that's not good enough. They gotta find other stuff they can sell so they can become rich. But all they find are beavers and moose and turtles. And when they tell Christopher Columbus, that one squeezes his ears and he chews his nose and he grinds his teeth. He grinds his teeth so hard he gets a headache. And then he gets cranky. And then he gets an idea. Say, says Christopher Columbus, I'll bet this is India. And he looks at the human beings. I'll bet those are Indians. And he looks at his friends. I bet we can sell those Indians. 
Yes, his friends, that's a good idea. We could sell Indians. And they stopped trying to catch the beavers and the moose and the turtles. Phew, says those beavers and moose and turtles. That was close. And they run and hide before Christopher Columbus and his friends change their mind. What do you think about whether or not it's okay to sell people? It's not okay to sell people. Wait a minute, says the human beings. That is not a good idea. That is a bad idea. That is a bad idea full of bad manners. When Coyote hears this bad idea, she starts to laugh. Who would buy human beings, she says. And then she laughs some more. She laughs so hard she has to hold on to her nose on her face with both of her hands. But while that coyote is laughing, Christopher Columbus grabs a big bunch of men and women and children and locks them up in his ships. When Coyote stops laughing and looks around, she sees that some of the human beings are missing. Hey, she says, where are those human beings? Where are my friends? Uh-oh. Christopher Columbus has locked those human beings up in his ships. That's not the right thing to do, friends. I'm going to sell them in Spain, says Christopher Columbus. Somebody has to pay for this trip. Sailing over the ocean blue isn't cheap, you know. Grab some more Indians. But the rest of the human beings see Columbus coming and they jump into the pond. I'm a beaver, they says. I'm a moose, they says. I'm a turtle, they says. Hmm, says Columbus and he scratches his nose. Where did all the Indians go? They went that away, said the beaver human beings and the moose human beings and the turtle human beings, and they point in all directions. They fooled him by pretending to be moose and beavers and turtles. Do you think that would really work? Maybe. Wait a minute, says Coyote. What about my friends you have locked up in your ship? You've got to let them go. La 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 la, says Columbus, and that one goes back to Spain and sells the human beings to rich people like baseball players and dentists and babysitters and parents. Another couple trips like this, Columbus tells his friends that I'll be able to buy a big bag of licorice, jelly beans, and a used Mercedes. There's a picture of the people that he's selling up in his home country of Spain. That Christopher Columbus, we think about what's fair. Do you think it was fair to those human beings to travel all the way to Spain to be sold for Christopher Columbus, so he could buy a bag of jelly beans? That doesn't seem very fair. After Columbus and his friends leave, the beavers and the moose and the turtles come out of hiding and the human beings come out of the pond. You're supposed to fix up this world, cry those beavers and moose and turtles. You're supposed to make it right, but you keep messing it up too. Yes, says the human beings, you better watch out or this world is going to get bent. Everything is okay, says Coyote. I made a little mistake, but I take it back. I'll take Christopher Columbus back. You'll see, everything will be balanced again. Human beings are mad at Coyote. Remember, she, they said she made the world and she made Christopher Columbus and then he sold their friends. The world is all out of balance. Coyote's hopefully gonna help make it balanced again. So Coyote sings her song and she dances her dance and she thinks really hard and she thinks so hard that her nose falls off again. And when she looks around, she sees another bunch of funny looking people. Bonjour, says one of those funny looking people. I'm Jacques Cartier and I'm sailing the ocean blue. Uh oh, says those beavers and moose and turtles and human beings, Coyote's done it again. And they catch the first train to Penticton. Don't panic, says Coyote. Everything is under control. Uh-oh. Do you think it's under control? Do you trust Coyote? That's an interesting question. If someone's doing something that is making things unfair, how do you feel about them? Is it hard to trust them again? I'm looking for India, says Jacques Cartier. Have you seen it? Coyote makes a happy mouth. And that one wags her ears. Forget India, she says. Maybe you want to play ball. Uh-oh. Here we go again. That's the end of the Coyote Columbus story, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. It's got some interesting themes to think about. What does it mean for things to be fair? Can you keep changing the rules as you go along? Is that fair? What about some things that are really unfair? Selling people to pay for things? That's super unfair. Changing the rules to a game as you play? That's also unfair. 
How does it make you feel when things are unfair? When things feel unfair, what are some things that you can do? When things seem really unfair, I always like to ask myself, what can I do to help bring this back into balance? And that's where I put my energy. I hope that helps. I hope you enjoyed our Coyote Columbus story today. And I look forward to seeing you again in the Zoomiverse real soon. Take care, everyone.